I love January. It always fills me full of hope and wonder. I wonder if Joe Rogan will give us a new animal sound this year. <laughs> I wonder how long into the year we're going to have to wait for another iconic Asmongold rage moment. Fuck. Apparently not very long. But most importantly, I wonder about the future Jesus of MMO Christ, RPGs. Shut the fuck up! Nobody gives a shit! Okay, I'm out of here. You gotta keep talking like I'm... No, enough! Okay, I'm sorry for the dramatic intro. I'm doing a MMORPG tier list for all the future MMORPGs. What could go wrong? Wait, 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 wait. I forgot to say, get this video to 1069 likes or I'll never do a tier list again. Those are the rules. Burn and Liberty, a game which has literally been in development for 13 years. It has such great mechanics like turning into an eagle. <coughs> Alright, yeah, okay, I can't do that voice any longer. <coughs> so first game on the future MMO RPG tier list is of course Throne and Liberty. This game was actually expected to come out last year. To clarify, that's for the West because it actually kind of did come out last year for Korea, but not quite yet for the West. And that's because there's been heaps of delays down to people's feedback about how shit the beta was. So essentially they had to go back to the drawing board, take a look at their combat in particular, and just try and put out a better version than what they had done before. Some might argue that this title has improved, Perfection. but ultimately there's a lot of unappealing aspects about Throne and Liberty. Yes, the combat has been overhauled and it's a lot better than what it once was. But hear me out, if you get this far into development and you've only just realized that nobody likes the combat and it's fucking trash, I got a funny feeling there's going to be a lot of other systems which are similar. The game will indeed be free to play and you know full well if it's free to play there's going to be a lot of heavy monetization. The cash shop as it currently stands allow you to buy in-game items with real world money so definitely pay to win. I think as well this game is probably operating at a loss at this point in time given how long it's been in development for so would it get even worse? I don't know, do companies like losing money? Ask yourself that. Personally, I'm probably not going to waste my time with this title, it's not to say that it's a horrible game, there's probably a lot worse out there. It is actually coming out as well which is a bonus compared to some of the other titles I'll be covering off. So I'm going to put it in C tier because I can't be bothered to play it. Next up on the list is PAX Day. Hacks Day is a social sandbox MMO developed on Unreal Engine 5 where you can build a home, craft your weapons and go to war. What world will you make? Pax Day recently hosted a very exclusive alpha which I managed to get access to. I say exclusive, there's about 10,000 keys so not that exclusive. Either way though, it gave me an insight into how this UE5 MMO is going to look. And they've done a good job. In fact, a lot of people were praising the game for its building mechanics. They didn't have the combat sorted out yet, and that was very clear from the few fights that I had. But they weren't testing that aspect of the game. They just wanted to see what people could build. But the issue is, they kind of went ahead and shat the bed when they started announcing how they're going to monetize the game. So what monetization did they propose? A one-off fee, a sub, a cash shop and of course a token of some sort basically anything and everything <laughs> pax day went from heroes to villains overnight they were praised for how good they were during the alpha and how receptive they were to community feedback but unfortunately they might have been a bit too open and honest with how they want to monetize the game you either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. I'll be completely honest with you, I think they probably shat the bed a bit with the way they announced the monetization. There's no guarantee they're going to stick to this model. And let's be realistic here, all we've seen so far is one alpha test which was base building and some very basic crafting. I'm not even sure if I want to buy this game, let alone worry about monetization. It does generally have promise if they see through everything that they've said. I'm predicting we've still got a couple of years before we even see the final beta for this title. 
So where do I rank this? I'm going to put it in the B tier because we still don't know a lot about this game, but it's showing promise and it's probably got less monetization than Throne and Liberty. The next title I want to look at is somewhat of a underdog. I'll be honest, there's one thing I've always wanted to see an MMORPG do, and that would be take where it's corely based, so say it's like medieval earth, and then just put it into space. And that's exactly what the guys at Starvolt are doing with their new announced title, Mortal Exodus. Which was actually announced last year and might have caused a bit of an exodus with the player base simply because of how batshit crazy this idea is. There is a bigger backstory to it which I actually made a video for which I'll link in the top right corner. But long story short, it's a future plan and a way to expand the Mortal Online 2 universe. And yeah, it's fucking nuts. It's the equivalent of announcing that the next Shivery 2 expansion is in space. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. So what can we actually expect from this title? Well, Mortal Online 2, but in space, which means it'll be a hardcore sandbox open world PvP game, which will probably have less than a thousand players. And trust me, I already know what you're thinking. This game goes straight to S tier, because anything that fucking left of center has got to be the best MMO RPG out there. I'm all in for it. We're still awaiting a release date, but I'll be there. I'll be in alpha, I'll be in beta. I'll pay $250 to get early access if I have to. I want to be on the moon with the other Mortal Online 2 players. <laughs> I was acting. Or was I? Anyway, let's swiftly move on to the next MMO RPG, which is of course, Arcage 2. The original Arcage came out in 2013, and believe it or not, was super popular until monetization got the best of it, and now you can go play it for free and see how dead of a game it has become. So you might be wondering who will be stupid enough then to buy a second version of Arcage? Well, it does have UE5, so there is a certain appeal to it. It looks to also be moving away from the original PvP system in Arcage and be more PvE friendly, which as you can imagine, there's a lot of Care Bears out there who love that sort of stuff. Some of you might be wondering, will this have a knock-on effect to Ashes of Creation, which was actually inspired by the original Arcage? The simple answer is no. Ashes of Creation is an open world PvX sandbox game with no pay to win. Whereas Arcage 2 looks like it's the reimagining of Black Desert Online, but with a PvE focus and a single player focus. The combination of Kakao games and XL games producing this honestly makes me feel like it's going to be horribly monetized, but I guess we'll see with time. It was scheduled to release at the end of 2024, but by the looks of it, they're now going to be doing the beta at the end of 2024. So maybe it'll come out next year. On paper, this looks like a okay game. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? But it's hard to ignore the fact that this is gonna be remade by the same greedy fucks who basically killed the first title. So do I really think that this is gonna be the next best MMO RPG? I'm not counting on it. And for that reason, I'm giving it a C for can't get me to play this game either. <laughs> Now a game that you will see me playing is of course Ashes of Creation because I am going to be part of Alpha 2. I know, I know, a lot of you will be jealous and a lot of you will just be calling me a dumb fuck. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Oh good heavens, how utterly cringeworthy. It's probably the most anticipated MMO RPG in quite some time. There's probably only two others I can think of off the top of my head which would even compete with the hype around this title. If you don't know anything about Ashes of Creation, just go check out my last video. I'll leave a link in the top right. But the reason this game is so hyped is because it's being created by someone who's an MMO RPG fan. They aren't being budgeted by a huge company, so they can take their time to actually release this and get it working just right. The Alpha 2 will be live this year, Q3, and God knows when the actual game will come out. There's 64 different classes, a range of crafting, the node system, the caravan system, 
naval PvP, and the list goes on. There's so much to see and do in Asher Creation that it's going to be huge. So where do I rank this game? Well, I don't think it's quite Mortal Exodus level. I will give it a A tier because I'm apprehensive about this game actually reaching its true potential. Otherwise, A for awesome, A for alpha 2, A for always be coping. Next up on the list is The Quinfall, which I'm just going to cut straight to the point. Ah uh, yes, Quinfall, the game that promises everything. The game that literally caters to anyone and everyone. I'm sure this is legit and not a scam because they do want to incorporate every little feature into the game just so that they can make the best MMO possible. Obviously, it's all horseshit. There is an early beta you can sign up for, whether it'll be released or not is a different question and of course they have it on the steam store so you can add it to your wish list the fact that it's on the steam store to me it smells like they're going to do a early access release now the problem with early access release games is that they're notorious for just never being finished they always just come out in this half-cooked state and people buy into it and eventually the developers abandon the project it's very 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 99% sure this is a scam I called it a scam last year, everyone called it a scam throughout the year, and now everyone's calling it a scam again because their open beta is about to come up. I'm not going to waste my time on this one, this is D tier, do not touch, do not spend money on, do not waste your time. Funnily enough, on the same video I called Quinn for a scam, I also talked about Fractured Online. The game itself wasn't necessarily a scam, it was just obviously a Kickstarter which meant it had problems with funding. Which then led to a business deal between them and Gamigo Games, who were just a scummer of a publisher. Now, funny enough, in that same video, almost a year later, one of the members of the development team commented, because apparently there's misinformation about me saying it was bought out by Gamigo Games. I'll let you make up your mind, here's the retort to what they said, but the facts are pretty clear, and even if you go to the Gamigo Games website, you can see Fractured Online still on there. But let's actually look at the game itself. I did buy early access to this title and actually streamed it on my YouTube channel. You could probably find the video if you look hard enough. The game is a top down open world sandbox MMO RPG with PvP and PvE. In fact, it's open world PvP once you get past a certain criteria. It has certain elements about it that reminds me of Ultimate Online. And I think for that reason, not many people are going to like this. And that's not a dig at the game. It's just a dig at the... MMORPG population. I did try to sink more hours into it offline but I just ran out of time and you can tell it's one of those games where there's going to be a steep learning curve. Personally I think it's a good game, it does need a little bit more work so I'm going to give it a B ranking because there's still time for it to be better or come to think of it be worse. Anyway our next MMO is a special MMO because it has no name, only a project name. I am of course talking about Zenimax's next new MMO which is Project Kestrel. There are rumours that this could be a Star Wars related MMO but I'm pretty confident it's not. One of the more interesting facts about its title is that according to the leaks this was supposed to be released in 2023. Like a lot of games on this list they have been delayed. So it might be a couple years yet before we see anything from Project Kestrel. Interestingly enough though, from a financial standpoint, in regards to the actual revenue generated by Project Kestrel, they predicted it would generate as much as ESO and Fallout 76, which is less than The Elder Scrolls 6, Starfield and a new Doom title. Because you know, Star Wars games are notorious for not making any money whatsoever. And from the same leaker they did say about Zenimax's new IP, and stating that it's a sci-fi based game with flying cars and a lot of high verticality and parkour apparently. But given my previous experience with The Elder Scrolls Online, I can't say I'm very excited for this title because you know full well it's going to be an over monetized cesspit and it'll get very boring very quickly. But I also believe God likes to punish me so it'll probably be the best MMO RPG out there so I'm going to put an S tier just to cover all bases. Next up is an MMO with quite a loyal fan base. We are, of course, talking about Dune Awakening. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I have not read the books. I have not even watched the movie. So my Dune lore, my Dune knowledge, just doesn't exist. However, my content creator friends are super excited about this title, which makes me super excited for this title. 
It is designed to be a survival sandbox MMO where thousands of players will explore a vast shared open world full of dangers. Funcom are the developers behind this title and you may know them from other games such as Conan Exiles and Mutant Year Zero. They do have some closed beta testing happening soon which is clearly a good sign because it means that they're happy for people to go in and have a look at their game. Like I said I don't know too much about Dune itself but what I can tell you is that if this is anything like Conan Exiles and they've put it into space, well, that's got to be a winning formula, am I right? I have to put this in S tier, you understand the logic behind this, but I do generally think it has legs, so we'll see what happens in the future. Whilst we're on the theme of franchises, let's take a look at the next big MMO to potentially come out in the next couple of years, and that's the Amazon Lord of the Rings MMO. We don't have an official title for this game yet, and we don't have any footage. What we do know is that it's potentially running on the New World engine and will likely be a action combat MMO, which is great. I mean, I wouldn't mind New World with a Lord of the Rings theme, quite honestly. Funny enough, this title was announced back in 2019. It was then canceled in 2021 and then announced again last year. So it's safe to say it's had quite a volatile life cycle and we still know nothing about it. I'll be honest, I know no details and I'm excited about this game. I hope that it comes out and I hope to play it someday. And because there is nothing to complain about, this game is perfect. Not quite S tier, I'm going to put in A tier. If we get an official name for the title, I'll bump it up to S tier, I promise. Next on the list is the highly anticipated MMO from Riot Games. You might have heard of Riot Games, they've done such popular titles as Valorant and League of Legends. Personally, my League of Legends knowledge is this. Creeps. It no, is seriously you're done, you're embarrassing done. watching you miss creeps when there isn't an enemy to ah! Oh! Fuck me! Shut the fuck up! Oh fuck, I hate these cunts! Put a venom! Fucking put a venom! Thank you, Anonymous, for gifting my underscore butthole underscore smells. Honestly, I can't even begin to imagine what sort of MMO this will be. I assume it's going to be some sweaty competitive MMO, potentially, I don't know. Um, I'm not really that excited about it, I'm sure other people are. I'd love to put this in D tier, but just to avoid an argument, I'm going to put it in um, C. You can have C, there you go. I'm sure there'll be no backlash whatsoever from putting it in C tier. Now one for the golden oldies, I am of course talking about Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. Similar to Ashes of Creation, this was a MMO Kickstarter passion project, although this one actually failed to meet its goal. I'm so proud of this community. But never fear, it still made bank and it also started selling alpha keys similar to <laughs> Ashes, although they had a slightly larger markup. You see this? But anyway, I'm not here to discuss Kickstarters, I'm here to discuss the gameplay. Also, quick sidebar, am I allowed to complain about paying for alpha access when I've just paid for alpha access? It's so dumb. Oh, it's so dumb, it's brilliant. No! It's just dumb! Yes. Yes, I am. I would categorize this as a boomer MMO, which is basically tab targeting, slow combat, and just looking like a game from 20 years ago. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's clearly a market for it, and people enjoy those sort of games. It's worth noting as well, this game's been in development for about nine years now, and it's still in pre-alpha. I know it's wrong to throw shade when you are a backer of Ashes of Creation, but hear me out. Ashes of Creation doesn't look like it was made on a fucking Nokia 3210, whereas this game, obviously, they've gone for an old-style classic RPG look, which, if anything, you think would speed up the development process. At the end of 2023, it did enjoy some pre-alpha testing with its community, which could mean, hear me out, there could be actual alpha testing in 2024. I have played a lot of classic tab targeting MMOs over the last couple of years, and I don't mind them. It's not that I go out my way to play them, and I definitely don't look at them and go, oh, such nostalgia. For me personally, there's no appeal to this game. However, it's definitely not as bad as Quinfall, so I'm not putting it in D tier. I will put it in C tier because although I agree nostalgia can be a very strong sales pitch, a lot of the old MMO RPGs are classics because they were the best thing at the current time when they were released. 
It's like me going to buy a new car and saying, hey, can you take out the seat belts, the airbags and the ABS because I want to have a nostalgic driving time. Or better still, I want that classic Victorian feel around my house, so let me put in a load of asbestos. And on that bombshell, I think that concludes the list for now. There was a lot of Korean MMO RPGs coming out, which quite frankly just do not interest me. Why not, you stupid bastard? The problem with the MMO RPG genre is that there's a lot of scam games out there. Anything along the lines of NFT or Web3 instantly gives me the ick. Or worse still, any game which is basically a mobile game but ported to PC. And you know if it's a mobile game, it's going to have a very heavily monetized cash shop. But anyway, I like discussion, I like talking about MMO RPGs. So why don't you comment below any games you feel that I missed or any that probably should have had a better tier within my tier list. I also want to point out, I think tier lists are stupid and I don't like them. So please don't give this video to 1069 likes because I really hate tier lists. And on that bombshell, I'll end the video there. A big thank you to my YouTube and Patreon members. You guys are the best. Bye bye for now.